Crazy Beat Records in Upminster. This is 3345 for Fabric. So I was introduced to Crazy Beat by my pal Alec Faulkner. I think he'd been coming here for years prior. He lived, grew up not too far away. Yeah, we came down here before we were playing a show together in London um, years ago now. Um, and yeah, ever since then, I've tried to make it over here as often as I can and sort of dig, dig their discog. I think anyone in their right mind would have to pick out a record with that centre label, just in case. Nice old school groover. Lots of nice wiggy sounds which I'm into. Yeah, I think there'll definitely be room for that in the collection. Yeah, let's go. I think artwork and aesthetic of a record is very important when, I mean, you know, sometimes you'll go through and you'll find a particular record you're after, but that's not that common really, I think. It's usually you're looking to discover new things and I think I'm always drawn in by a white label with a little scribble on it because, you know, you just never know what's going to be on there. Sometimes you just pull out uh, a record, you've never heard of the artist, you've never seen the label before, like you, th there's nothing familiar on there, but you just know that's going to be, you know, for some reason, you know, that's going to be a belter. And then more than, more than often, than it is. Generally I'm looking for, you know, either an artist that I've heard of, a label that I know, but if other than that, just like an artwork that catches your eye and always a white label for me. That's that's always going in the pile. I've got no idea what this one is. Absolutely no info. Let's see what we got. Sounds like a 138 track mashup of. What's it going to be? Ooh. There it is. <laughs> Must be about 101, three, 138 track mashups like this. And this is a, not a bad one. <laughs> For three quid, it's worth having in the collection, I think. Just in case the opportunity arises. So memory of, of playing Fabric would be um, last time actually playing in the um, new and improved room too, which is just I think one of the one of the best rooms for music, definitely in London and beyond. Yeah, I remember playing um, Dougie at the Oki by Big Hair. <laughs> never heard the tune in that way before it kind of like transformed I mean just like pulled the bass out of like every corner of the, the tune and I think like after kind of playing that tune and, and, and that set really it kind of like I, I've been digging for different stuff for, for, for the upcoming uh, showcase in, in room two. This is one I picked out um, 
found some really nice bits on Honeybee Records before, which is, um, I believe was run by DJ Ride. Um, I think this is a couple of remixes of um, another release from DJ Ride, but I haven't actually checked it out before. The remix. Looking for stuff not too vocally really these days. But I think hopefully there's not too much throughout. Yeah, it's always got pretty interesting productions, DJ Ride. I can see that fitting somewhere in a set. Maybe a little edit would be required. Two real rare finds that I found in, in, in one sitting was um, at Container Records in Brixton. I had to listen to a handful of them and I was noticing all the ones with like a little E written on were, um, were absolute belters basically. So uh, one of them was the Feeling EP um, by Big Fat, I think the, the, the artist was. Um, and that's one I actually went on to, it came out in 2000, it actually had a um, phone number written on it. I just chanced my luck and called the, the mobile number on it and the guy picked up and I was just like, hello, did you, did you make this EP back in 2000? He was like, yeah, where'd you get the number? I was like, oh, it's written on the, written on the thing. Like, have you got any more copies? He was like, yeah, I've got a load of them in my loft and like, would you be up for reissuing it? And he was like, yeah, definitely. Single sider, no info. a little mashup. Can't remember where the original beats from. Yeah, it's, I have looking for less vocally stuff these days, although I do like the odd sort of like, you know, just like a nice classic vocal overlaid over a, a garage beat, so that could work. I think it's the, the, the thing that attracts me back to vinyl uh, or keeps me kind of digging and, and, and buying records is just, I don't know, it's the tangibility of it. A big thing is with digital music, you might have something and it just gets lost in this sea of, you know, kind of constantly churning, uh, you know, like the, I'm constantly getting sent demos and, and, and promos and you know you've just got this kind of like massive body of, of, of digital music which I think is important to have but um, but stuff just gets lost you know whereas with the record you know it's there like you know when I'm digging through to pick out pick out uh, tunes for a, for a show like I'm going past it remember oh, I remember that I just I want something you can hold take it to bed like just you know yeah I don't know 